uh, in an unusual manner. Sounds like a funny thing to say, but it but it behaves in a in a in a way that is um, uh, that is not um, in line with what the cycles are doing. So now I strongly suspect that uh, Tuesday, the 9th of August, was an example of um, of fundamental interaction. Uh, if you're interested, you could you could possibly search news, search the new, uh, um, search the news for that date and see whether whether there was any particular news. Um, fundamental interaction is not always caused by by news events. It's also sometimes caused by um, by what happens um, in the United States. Um, uh, and uh, if you are looking at a market that's not based in the United States, and I know that from personal experience, as a trader in South Africa. Um, uh, our uh, market would open at um, at 9 a.m. in the morning in South Africa, which was the middle of the night for 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 America. And you will know as Australians that exactly the same thing happens uh, for your market, but it's even more extreme uh, because of the difference in the time zone. And uh, what will sometimes happen in the South African market is it, it would feel as if though the South African market would look at what had happened the day before in the American market, and and the South African market would would um, take its lead, if you like, from what happened the day before in the American market, and sometimes it would um, it would overreact. So if the American market had the day before fallen quite strongly then um, very possibly the South African market uh, that I was trading, and in this example, the Australian market, very possibly um, uh, the Australian market overreacted to that. And they saw that the markets had fallen even further in the United States, and that caused some kind of panic in Australia. I know it happens um, often in South Africa. So fundamental interaction in South Africa has to do with the different time zones. It's as simple as that. And I would know as a South African trader, if the American markets fell hard, um, that there was uh, like, uh, likely to be um, quite a lot of panic in the South African market. However, the um, American markets opened at about 3 p.m. Uh, South African time. And very often, um, um, at that time, as the American markets opened, South African traders would see that the American markets had perhaps um, opened higher um, and so the, the strong fall that had been happening the day before wasn't being continued into the new day. And um, so the South African market would bounce back with a vengeance. They're very dangerous times uh, as a trader and you need to be aware of that um, if you're trading in, um, in Australia um, or uh, if, you know, in any time zone that's not based on the American market. Um, no doubt there's uh, some interplay with the um, with the British markets as well, but I found that in South Africa the American market tended to be the leader rather than the English market, and to some extent the English market also tends to f uh, play follow my leader with the American markets. Um, um, what, I, I won't get into why it is and or discuss the potential politics, but um, but it is something that seems to happen um, on a re uh, regular basis uh, um, with markets that aren't based in America. So um, I suspect that something like that happened on the 9th of August 2011. I suspect that the, the American markets had fallen the day before. As an Australian, you woke up and all those Americans were fast asleep and um, uh, uh, started trading your market. Um, uh, there was a lot of panic in Australia because um, there was a, a lot of talk at that time that the market was crashing. And um, so um, because of that panic, um, uh, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy, of course, and the market did fall strongly. Um, then, um, then perhaps later in the day, um, uh, there was more uh, enthusiasm. Perhaps, uh, perhaps the Australians realized that, uh, that actually the world doesn't revolve around America and that actually the markets were fine and the, and, and, uh, the, the prices started bouncing up again. So uh, what I'm saying is that on, on the 9th of August uh, of 2011, there was a lot of fundamental interaction. Now, Sentient Trader um, has, um, has, looked at, um, has looked at this chart and said, well, that is obviously the, the really important trough on the 9th of August. Okay, um, But I think that that trough on the 9th of August was caused by fundamental interaction. Okay, I think um, actually the trough... Um, uh, uh, should be this trough over here on the 4th of October, okay? And uh, uh, for many reasons. That is the trough that, um, that m uh, many people have identified as a trough um, uh, in, in world markets. All around the world, many, many markets experienced a trough on the 4th of October. And um, when, 
when something um, when when a trough happens in many markets all around the world, um, it's a sure sign that that is a really important trough, and we're talking about here potentially a four and a half year cycle trough. Okay, so. Um, um, uh, the, the fact that that uh, trough occurred around the world at that time, uh, on that day, on the 4th of October, makes it uh, really very likely that that trough would be better placed on the 4th of October and shouldn't be placed here on the 9th of August at all because the 9th of August was simply fundamental interaction. Okay, so um, so that's my take on this analysis. Um, uh, just straight off, uh, I think that is a I think that's a really big problem. Okay, that. Um, that uh, uh, you know that the trough was positioned in in August. So now um, I see a chat message: um, fear driven by global debt crisis. There we go. Uh, thanks, Paul. So um, there's some news uh, that was causing uh, a potentially fundamental interaction. Of course, um, you you'll probably know that that um, I, I believe that markets are moved entirely by cycles, and I think that news events and so on simply bump the markets in a particular direction. In which direction they happen to bump them depends on which way the cycles are moving. Okay, I don't believe that news drives markets at all, but news does cause volatility, and that's very important, and it causes fundamental interaction. Okay, so. Um, I uh, want to position this, this trough over here. Now, of course, if you were analyzing a market by hand using Hearst cyclic theories, it would be really easy to position the trough. You simply draw the diamond at the bottom of the chart. How can you do it using a software package that's doing the analysis for you? You can do it really, really easy, easily. Um, you create something called an expert model. Don't be frightened um, uh, by the concept of an expert model. Um, an expert model is really very, very simple um, to do. Uh, I'm not going to um, speak about it at uh, length here, but um, but uh, uh, creating an uh, expert model um, uh, has enabled me to shift this analysis so that um, that four and a half year cycle trough is now positioned uh, correctly, um, I believe, on the 4th of October. Okay, there it is. Um, uh, um, it's very quick and easy creating an expert model. This particular expert model took me, um, I used only one cycle, the 18 month cycle. It took me um, two or three minutes to do, and then I simply um, generated a new analysis. Um, so, what I did is I created a new chart within the same workspace. Um, people often ask us, what's the difference between workspaces and charts? Why do you have workspaces and charts? I believe that if you're going to analyze a market, you create a workspace for that market. Then you create multiple charts within that workspace, which enable you to look at various alternative analyses. Okay, so that's what I've done. I've called this alternate um, because um, I thought that that trough should be better positioned um, over there uh, um, on uh, uh, on the uh, 4th of October. Um, uh, in fact, if uh, if you'd be interested, uh, I'd be very happy to upload this uh, workspace and the data file, and um, and you can all um, and you can all be uh, playing around with this analysis on your own computers. Um, uh, just let me know if you're interested. I'll do it at the end of today's trader chat. I'll, I'll upload those files. Um, so uh, so. I think that this is a better analysis. Um, let's zoom all the way out and go um, go uh, uh, to a week view, and let's take a look at this. Uh, this analysis doesn't differ very much from the previous analysis that we've been looking at. Um, as you can see, um, there's still a 54-month cycle trough here in March of 2003, another 54-month cycle trough here in August of 2007, and um, then a 54-month cycle trough here, no longer in August of 2011, but now in October of 2011. I think this is a very viable analysis. However, um, it does still concern me that um, the uh, four-and-a-half-year cycle trough in October of uh, 2011 um, just feel right um, when you uh, uh, when you consider these um, these other um, um, uh, cycle troughs. As you will know, if you're a, a, a Centin Trader user, um, I believe in looking at the shapes of the cycles. And um, looking at the shapes of the cycles is actually just a very simple way of considering things like underlying trend and whether um, the underlying trend makes sense in the in the cycle and how it plays out. 
So um, let's take a look at the shifts of these cycles, and, and I think I will demonstrate to you, I hope I will demonstrate to you, um, uh, my issues. I'm trying to get rid of that um, that block before I uh, set my whiteboard. There we go. Okay. Um, let's have a look at the shapes of the 54-month cycle. Now, you will know that, um, that the shapes of the cycles involve uh, a, a simplification of the cycle into a basic M shape. Okay, so all, all cycles um, eventually look a bit like a, a capital M. Um, so let's take a look at the 54-month cycle shape that is playing out here. Um, as a matter of interest, how do you calculate the 54-month cycle shapes uh, when you have a harmonic ratio of 3 to 1 uh, with the cycle shorter than the 54-month cycle, you do it by choosing um, one of the 18-month cycle troughs as the midpoint, and you choose the more prominent one. So here is the shape of uh, this 54-month cycle. Okay, it goes like that, then like that, um, then like that, and then like that. That's the first 54-month cycle. Very, very bullish cycle. Okay, um, extraordinarily bullish cycle. Um, uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, it's a perfectly reasonable shape. There's nothing in that shape that tells us that there's anything wrong with it. Okay. In other words, um, by looking at a cycle shape, you, you can get an instant idea of whether the underlying trend is um, is reasonable or not. Okay. Um, that's the whole idea of working with the cycle shapes. Let's look at the next uh, cycle shape. Um, again, uh, you look at the 18-month uh, cycle troughs and you find the most prominent one, which is, of course, this one over here. And so you, you build your shape around that. Um, uh, there's the first move up. There's uh, what we call leg one or wave one. There's the move down. That's wave two or leg two. And then here is the um, uh, third leg. And then here is the, the fourth leg. Now, that shape is, um, is uh, what we call an inverted shape. Why? Because the central point of the M, okay, there's the central point of the M. The central point of the M in price is lower than, than the start and the end of that shape, okay? Now, an inverted shape tells you that there's some inconsistency in the analysis, that's, that's all it tells you. Um, if you want to get complicated about it, 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 it means that, um, that the underlying trend picture between the adjacent cycles is not making sense. Okay? Uh, um, but let's just stay simple for today. Uh, today's our, our first trade chat uh, um, uh, for some of you, and um, so, so, we'll, so we'll keep it simple uh, today. Um, uh, an inverted shape tells you, it's a, it's a clue that there's something wrong with this analysis. Okay, um, and of course, what I, what I think is wrong with this analysis is the placement of the 54-month cycle. Okay, uh, as I mentioned right at the beginning of the, of the discussion of this particular analysis. Um, as a matter of interest, if you don't want to be bothered to draw shapes and uh, uh, figure out what's going.